This is for you if you've had your elbow condition for more than say six weeks. I'm gonna share with you today my top tips and tricks for getting a stubborn elbow problem better, for kickstarting the healing process if you are finding you are stalled. Hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Burke. Elbow tendonitis is a super common complaint and something that many people are gonna face over the course of their lifetime. This problem is so common and there is so much confusion and mixed information about how best to manage it that I put together a few videos on the topic for you. In this video, we're gonna talk about those chronic problems. If you want more information on how we diagnose these and some other specific information related to management, including treatment options, check out some of my other videos. This is for you if you've had your elbow condition for more than say six weeks and you're stuck. You are feeling frustrated and you're still having problems and you can't do what you want to do because of your elbow. This video is for you. And because I'm a physical therapist, the emphasis today is on the stuff that you are not gonna find doing an online search for how to treat your elbow. I'm gonna share with you today my top tips and tricks for getting a stubborn elbow problem better, for kickstarting the healing process if you are finding you are stalled. I have about seven or so of these tips I'm gonna share with you to help you get better and I'm also gonna talk about a few of the elephants in the room, a few of the treatments or approaches that many people will advocate that may or may not be helpful for you. So be sure to stick around through till we get to those points because I think they're really gonna be helpful for you. Okay, let's dive in. Why isn't your elbow healing? Number one, sensitivity is its own problem. Now I start with this because pain is a powerful educator. Anytime we hurt our bodies. Pain is a message that tells us to protect that part of our body. And it's a great, useful message. At times, however, the message is disproportionate to the injury. And the elbow is a great example of this because of the nature of those tissues, how they're injured, often through overuse and how the nerves pass through the elbow. It is a structure that is prone to sensitivity which means sensitivity becomes its own sort of problem. It's not just about what's happening with those tissues, it's also about how your body perceives the injury and perceives the threat to your body if you were to keep doing whatever your activity is. So my advice, number one, is treat sensitivity as almost a side or uh, unique part of this problem. And the treatment for sensitivity is a little different than the treatment for the tendon itself. All right, I can't leave you with that. I've got to give you a few tips to treat sensitivity. Number one, rub and massage your elbow gently. Touch it, stroke your muscles. Sensitivity is just as much about contact and touch and skin, so you can work your tissues. An example would be just running your hands along your elbow, any part that's uncomfortable, and do this frequently, maybe every couple few hours, just do five to 10 little easy gentle massage strokes. That's tip number one. Tip number two, pressure can be very useful. Pressure from a sleeve over your elbow. We're gonna talk about bracing later, but they make simple sleeves that cover your elbow that will give you a little bit of pressure and pressure causes gating in your brain. So while you have more gentle pressure, you're blocking pain messages, very useful tip. Okay, back to the main story, why your elbow isn't healing. Number two, the point at which you begin to feel pain in your elbow, if this is a overuse problem, was probably not when this problem started. This is an overuse injury, meaning repetitive motion over time micro trauma in those tissues. And we have to take that into account when we look at healing time. So the mark on your timeline from when you first started having pain, look at what you were doing. Look at the kinds of actions. Were you using the computer? Were you driving? Were you working with tools or heavy equipment? If you were doing those things for a long time, then your elbow problem could have been cooking 
for a long time and that means it's going to take a little bit longer for you to turn this around. So the bottom line for this second point is you have to be patient because the point of pain wasn't the start of this problem in most cases. Why isn't your elbow healing? Number three, you're not loading it enough. Tendons are built to withstand pull. When your muscle contracts, it pulls through the tendon onto the bone and that's what causes the motion. So they're really designed for that. And that is often the key to unlocking healing potential in many places in your body, anywhere you have a tendon, you have to put some load through to stimulate the right kind of tendon regrowth. Typical scenario that I see in the clinic, someone who develops this problem, at first we're optimistic, we're hopeful, we're doing all the right things and then time goes on. We're dealing with the sensitivity of it, it's painful. And what we do instinctively is we really shut it down, we stop doing all of our activities Maybe we're doing some rehab exercises, but that's not the same as doing our normal thing in terms of frequency, how much we move it, what kind of forces we move it under. All of those things can be different once we have this injury. So often after a period of time, I find that my patients are underloaded. They're not putting enough force through that tendon in order to stimulate the right kind of growth. So that's what we need to do. We need to increase the load gradually, progressively, steadily. And this point alone of all of these points is often the one that helps people start to turn the corner within say two to three weeks of beginning to load it a little more. Now I'm talking very specific micro doses of higher forces. I'm not talking just going back into whatever situation caused the problem in the first place. So that's worth mentioning. Why is it a healing tip number four? Some folks are loading too much. And the biggest culprit in this case is not being able to stop doing the activity that caused the problem in the first place. It could be work related. So it's hard to really get away from being at a computer for eight hours a day or using heavy equipment or driving or whatever it is. So that can be an issue of itself. And if that's the case for you, if you're unable to get away from the activities that you think may have contributed to this, then some of the treatment techniques are going to be more important for you than others. And it just means that the whole irritability of your elbow is going to be a bit higher if you really can't totally shut it down. And I know that's a common problem for a lot of people. We can't stop doing the things that we need to do to earn a living, for example. But if this was sports related or hobby related, then I certainly would ask my patients, take a break until we get ahead of this a bit. Number five, over gripping. Okay, this is underappreciated with the elbow. We tend to think of the elbow in terms of straightening and bending. Those are its main motions. Rotating the forearm is another set of motions, but gripping, these are two joint muscles, meaning they cross the elbow and the wrist. And so what you do with your hand is significant for what happens with your elbow. So think about all of the activities that you're doing, whether it's swinging a golf club or hitting a tennis ball or using tools or operating equipment and look at the force of your grip. If you are constantly squeezing hard, that is going to feed into your elbow and that could be prolonging your recovery. Number six, this is a tip that I've never heard any physician address, but as a PT, I look at it every single case. And that is, how are you positioning your arm during activities of rest, such as sleeping or relaxing or when you're driving because static positions of your elbow, especially with your elbow bent, can be a problem. Classic example, when people go to sleep, often they tuck their hands close to their body and tucking your hands in causes a fair amount of elbow flexion. And that position over the many hours of sleep at night can lead to more irritation and sensitivity in those tissues. So my recommendation is number one, look at all of your static positions examine them to see what you're doing with your elbow and shoot for elbow in mid to slightly extended range of motion. And if your static positions are occurring during the day when you're working or driving or relaxing, 
vary those positions frequently. Bend and straighten your elbow within this mid to straight range, maybe 10 to 15 times every 30 minutes or so as a start. Keep the blood flow going. It'll help keep your joint happy and reduce the likelihood of sensitivity and prolonged problems. Next point, you can overwork this. And I've seen this before, not with many, but with some. And by overworking it, I mean constant deep massage, exercise, hard exercise for it, to rehab exercises every two to three hours, etc. cetera. Overstretching it, those are things that while they're good, recovery is sort of what happens after the exercise. So the exercise is a kind of stress. The stretch is a kind of stress. It can relieve pain temporarily because you're doing something. You're moving, you're causing that gating pain phenomena I mentioned earlier. But the actual load on your tissues needs to be managed in a pretty narrow lane at first if you're sensitive. So if you're one of those people that's prone to really tackling things hard, do things discreetly and give your body a rest. With the caveat that the movement I mentioned before just actively extending and bending your arm within the mid to straighter range is very safe and that is going to be very therapeutic. I'm really talking about here deep massage, aggressive stretches, hard flex bar exercises or other exercises. Those are things that we don't want to overdo because that can sometimes lead to slower progress. So let's talk about the elephants in the room. Number one, bracing. Bracing, I think, is so uh, significant in terms of a common treatment people do for the elbow that I've seen really cause problems if used incorrectly that I'm going to make a separate video just on that alone. So take a look for that video. I'll leave a link for it in the description and maybe throw a card up there. So you're really going to want to check this out if you're using a brace or you are considering it because of someone's recommendation or research you've done. Should you be considering things like steroid injections, platelet injections, bracing, and surgeries for this problem? Well, as a PT, my expertise is movement, exercise, tissue healing, and recovery. And I'm going to say that what I've shared with you so far, the big pitfalls and the things that lead to delayed healing of the elbow, modifying those things can make uh, stubborn, painful elbow turn around within say two to three weeks. Not fully heal in that time, but make noticeable progress to the point where people are really feeling like they're getting back on track. Now with that said, I have also seen this problem take six months to heal. I've seen it take a year. So the decision to escalate and go for more medical treatment is a personal one and I can't make that decision for you. I can tell you that rehab works for this if you give it enough time and if you're able to modify the activities that you may have even been doing for years and years before pain developed. As always, seek help in your community if you find that you are stuck and thanks for watching.